I'd like to talk about this image by William Henry Fox Talbot and it was taken in 1844 um, which is before the Crimean War, that's incredible it's one of the first and still one of the best photographs ever taken the um, the photograph is called Open Door uh, for I think obvious reasons and uh, yeah it's just a marvel for me this it's um, it has a wonderful kind of formal beauty uh, it's almost it's it's quite austere in a way but in another way it's uh, very intimate um, it's a kind of there's a kind of um, interrupted symmetry you know so you've got um, the two kind of uh, the pilasters of the door there that kind of echo each other and you've got the plant some kind of creeper on either side that bookend the image and then in the middle you've got this mysterious space this open door with the very dark interior and just through the the gloom there you can make out another window on the far side of the room uh, that looks very ornate it looks like if I if I can see clearly it looks like there's a, a kind of stained glass uh, window or maybe it's another door inside there and then of course you've got this brilliant uh, <laughs> broom uh, and it just looks like the broom has been placed there but uh, I don't think so. I think it's been very carefully placed there. Uh, you can see the line of the broom uh, exactly matches the line of the shadow on the door. Uh, and that's not a coincidence, I think. Uh, well, we know it's not a coincidence, actually, um, for reasons I'll, I'll get to later on. But um, human beings like story storytelling I think um, we're natural storytellers we like the narrative and it's very easy to impose a narrative on this uh, on this photograph normally um, I don't like doing that I don't like imposing or projecting um, uh, a sort of f fantasy or a story on, onto an image but here it's it's it, it kind of uh, uh, pleads for you to do that. I mean, you can just imagine uh, uh, some old lady, or you know, the the housekeeper, or maybe even Fox Tolber himself, sort of brushing, brushing the step, and uh, getting a bit warm in the bright sunshine, and and then going inside for a cup of tea, and just you know, placing the the broom exactly so on the on the wall there. Um, but this this was published I think uh, mid 1840s 1840s that's incredible um, and it was published in a a, a book called uh, the pencil of nature and Fox Talbot himself uh, said that uh, and I quote we have sufficient authority in the Dutch School of Arts for taking as subjects of representation scenes of daily and familiar occurrence a painter's eye will often be arrested where ordinary people see nothing remarkable. A casual gleam of sunshine or a shadow thrown across his path, a time-withered oak or a moss-covered stone may awaken a train of thoughts and feelings. It's interesting for me that um, Fox Tolbert references painting. And it's something that I think will... Uh, I'll be doing that again and again in these videos. Um, well, I mean, Fox Talbot, of course, there, there, there was no photography before Fox Talbot. He basically invented it, uh, although I think the French would probably um, uh, say otherwise. But um, he he came out of uh, you know being came out of the painting tradition, and he he, he mentions the the Dutch school. And he also talks about the painter's vision, the artist's vision. And I think this is so important even today. 
as a painter myself, I, I do think I have an advantage when it comes to uh, photography. I think it does give me, having that trained painter's eye, that experienced eye, um, I can look at, yeah, even kind of really mundane scenes and see a certain kind of beauty, a formal abstract beauty where a great many people can't. They just see, I don't know, rubbish in the street or uh, uh, an old door or a, you know, a battered old car. But when an artist looks at that, they see something uh, extraordinary. They see an arrangement of colour and form, uh, the way light hits it. Um, and yeah, I think having that experience of or knowledge of painting, uh, the history of the history of painting and the history of photography, really has benefits. So when uh, Tolbert talks about Dutch painting, what was he talking about? Well, look at this. This is uh, a great painting by uh, one of my favourites, Peter de Hooch. Um, and I think it's just called something like Courtyard in Delft. And um, at, at, at first glance, it looks very kind of uh, informal and haphazard, just like Talbot's uh, photograph does. But if you look again, you'll see that it's very, very structured. You'll see that it's made up of a lot of verticals and a lot of horizontals. And there's a lot of perspective going in there that's, that makes it a very strong image. And <laughs> if you look at the bottom bottom right hand corner, you'll see a broom. Um, I've got no doubt at all that uh, Fox Tolbert knew this painting very well and and chose his broom very carefully. Um, it's uh, a very detailed painting. The brickwork is beautifully rendered. You can see the, the plants or the uh, maybe, I don't know whether it's a vine or something on the on the roof there. Um, and the woman disappearing in the, in the background there, going into the courtyard, which leads your eye. I mean, it, you're as a photographer as well, you can look at this and you can see how your eye is led, you know, from the, the, the mother and her daughter walking towards you. And then you've got the broom that kind of leads your eye around to the left. And then finally on the left hand side, you've got the woman walking through the corridor. So it's a kind of beautiful circular composition. Uh, if you have a look at another de Hooch, again we have a similar kind of thing and again we have the broom on the right hand side and again a very structured uh, painting of horizontals and verticals with yet again another, uh, I think it's a man disappearing into the background walking through the corridor and towards what looks like um, a flight of steps going upwards there I think or maybe it's just a, a wooden door a slatted wooden door but that's the kind of thing that uh, Tolbert had in his mind when he was constructing this photograph and I say constructed because although the the photograph looks um, as if it was just you know he just kind of set up the camera and photographed what he saw he certainly didn't do that. We know he didn't do that. He actually, you know, uh, uh, composed the image just as a painter would compose the image. This is a, an earlier example um, that he had done. I don't know whether he'd done it uh, a few days earlier or a few months earlier. Uh, but it's exactly the same scene, the same door, the same plants there on either side. Um, different broom. This one looks like it's been... Uh, <laughs> well used. And we've still got uh, the broom leaning against the wall, but it, it the, the composition doesn't work so well, uh, in my opinion. Um, okay, we've got the door moving in the same kind of direction as the broom. They're all going from kind of left to right. Uh, and it's okay. It's perfectly fine. Uh, but also there, there might be a an exposure problem as well. It looks 
slightly overexposed. Uh, so in the next image, in this next image, it's much better. The um, the light is great, the exposure is great. Um, I think today we'd call it dynamic range, which, uh, considering the you know very elemental or elementary uh, camera that he was using, is very good. You've got the uh, you know the kind of uh, sunlight in the foreground and uh, the deep shadows and the uh, the window in the background there. But again, you've got um, the composition. It's good. I think a, a lot of people would accept that. Um, but it doesn't. It, there's something not quite satisfying about it, particularly when you compare it with the final image, when you've got the the broom and the shadow, uh, the broom, the line of the broom and the line of the shadow, going in the same direction. Uh, and we can see from yet another image. This is a, a comparison between um, his original, or rather not the original, the uh, the final image that he chose on the left, and um, another earlier study on the right. And you can see there's a difference um, in the shadows there, in the amount of light that's falling across. And um, yeah, I'd, I, I would agree with... Um, Tolbert, that the one on the left is better. It's got, it's, um, maybe the one on the right is just a bit too bright, it's a bit too blown, as we as we would say now, the, the, the highlights have been blown. But also the shadow, uh, look at the shadows. Um, yeah, I think there's, there's just a much more wholesome, complete um, feeling about the the one on the left. It's just a more pleasing, harmonious image. And um, the final image is just beautiful. As I say, it's one of the earliest images, uh, one of the very first photographs ever taken, and um, still one of the best. Oh, I was almost forgetting the lamp. The lamp on the, um, on the right-hand side of the wall there. And actually, that's <laughs> that's very important. Um, and again, I don't think it's there just by coincidence. It's uh, it's a detail, maybe, but it's a very important detail, as details often are. It acts as a kind of counterweight uh, to the rest of the composition. Um, you've got the the heaviness of the door, and then the the broom uh, leaning on the wall, going round to the to the right, and that, that lamp just kind of counterbalances everything and kind of uh, fixes, uh, fixes the image very well. It also acts as a kind of, there's a, there's a sort of circle in the centre of the composition now. You've got the, is it the door handle at the top there, and then your eye is led down, and then uh, down the stem of the broom, and then to the right, and at, even at the bottom there, there's a kind of uh, I don't know, is it, is it some kind of a twig? Um, that L-shaped twig? That's not there in earlier uh, versions of this photograph. Um, and you, So your eye is led down and around and up towards the lamp and then back down to the door again. So it's, it's a very strong composition. Marvellous stuff. <laughs>